Wow, well, I just have to say, wow. Okay, where to begin? Man, this version, oh, man, where to start? All right, I guess I'll start from the beginning. Back in September of 1995, I had my hands on the issue of Game Fan Magazine. Issue 9, Volume 3. In it, there was this review for Doom on SNES. At the time, I was thinking, like, wow, Doom on SNES. I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. How could a 16-bit system perform Doom? Well, I went ahead and read the review, and they touted that, that there were only a few sacrifices. And that I would love the control scheme. And I'm a very impressionable person. And I was really impressed at how they described the experience of playing Doom on SNES. I believe that that version is a great port. And that kind of stayed with me until two years ago. Let's fast forward to October 2011. I was shopping at my local mom and pop video game store when I came across a box copy of Doom on SNES. You can say I was ecstatic. I thought back to that review I read a long ago and, and because I didn't even bother to see what other reviewers had thought, I went ahead and bought the damn game. And boy, was it something. First off, this game, believe it or not, is a much more faithful port to the 32X. It retains most of the original textures and it has 22 of the original 27 levels. It also has an overall map, you know, displaying where you currently are after you finish a level. Every single monster is included in this version especially the Cyber Demon and Spider Mastermind. Both of those bosses were absent from the 32X version. In essence, it feels more like a fuller Doom. Graphically, this game suffers terribly. Everything appears to be more pixelated and dark. It becomes a challenge trying to determine what distant objects are. There were times I was shooting at power-ups thinking that there were enemies. And like the 32X version, the entire game is displayed in a frame. Although it's not as bad, it's actually a li little bit bigger. Music in a game is awesome. Most of the tracks were rearranged using the SNES's sound processor, giving it a much more unique depth. In my opinion, I would say that this version's soundtrack is much better than the PC MIDI soundtrack. Sound effects, however, have been muffled. At times, the game would skip a sound effect or two as the action intensified on screen. Although it's not as clear as the 32X version, it's still somewhat acceptable. The button layout, I must say, is much better than the 32X's. L and R are used to strafe left and right, and the face buttons are used to open doors, fire weapons, and run. Select is used to bring up the map with the Mode 7 effect. Unfortunately, you are unable to strafe and turn at the same time, which makes circling around enemies impossible. Gameplay is where this version really suffers. Even with the power of the Super FX2 chip, this game moves around at a five to six frames per second. Aiming is definitely flawed since killing a monster only requires you to aim at, at their general direction. Moving around in a map feels stiff and unresponsive. This is probably due to the fact that there's a slight delay between you pushing a button and an action taking place on screen. Which could be a problem since Doom is filled with surprise attacks from monsters. Like the 32X, all the monsters are facing the player, which means that they are missing animation and makes the game somewhat more difficult. However, their movements do seem a bit slower, making the game feel a little easier in that respect. 
Another gripe I have against this version is the inability to save. Passing the level really takes some effort and not being able to save is frustrating as hell. Not to mention the only way you could play the later levels is by playing on ultra difficulty setting. You can only imagine the frustration I had as I played this. Now before I end this, I have to say that I am impressed at how well they pulled this off. Doing a first person shooter on an aging 16 bit console is an amazing feat. However, I can only give this version a D. With all the sacrifices and frustrating gameplay, this version is barely playable. Although I applaud their efforts, this is one of version of Doom that should have never been especially since a superior version was just around the corner. In my opinion, I would say this is one version of Doom you can avoid.